I understand that the early Sunday afternoon divisional round playoff game between the Cowboys and Packers at Lambeau features a lot of history and a lot of tradition and no doubt about it, two marquee NFL franchises. And I understand this whole notion that the last time these two teams faced off against each other in Lambeau in the playoffs, it was the Ice Bowl in the 1967 NFL Championship game. And there's all this talk about history and all this talk about that and all that's fine and good. That's stuff that we do as media, as NFL football fans. But can we get on to the actual game itself? Because when I look at this weekend's lineup of games, I know if for some people's money they might view the Ravens-Patriots matchup as the most compelling and the most interesting. I think the most interesting and compelling matchup that features two teams that are the closest in terms of ability levels, the two teams that match up almost identically, even more so maybe than the Carolina Panthers and the Seattle Seahawks, are the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers. I look at that game early Sunday afternoon as the game that I have circled on the calendar for this weekend that I'm going to be sure that I don't miss. This is the game that I want to see because I think this has the chance to be the get best game out of the four. How did these teams get to this point? You look at the Dallas Cowboys. This was a team that you know was terrible on the defensive side of the end of 2013, three straight years without the playoffs. A lot of people thought 2014 was going to be the exact same, and after that opening week debacle in Cowboys Stadium against the 49ers, you'd have been right to think so. But the Cowboys put it together. Rod Marinelli's done a heck of a job with a less-than-stellar defensive unit of getting something out of them. The Cowboys offensively shifted their play-calling philosophy to a run-first philosophy, and that has really paid huge dividends on both sides of the ball in 2014. And the Cowboys made a hell of a season for themselves that nobody can you know, really knock them for or hate on them for or take away from them for. They went 12-4. and four. They won the NFC East. They got a home playoff game that were really close to ending up with the number one overall seed in the playoffs. They beat the Lions in the wild card round, and you could say what you want about how that happened, but the bottom line is the Cowboys made plays when they needed to make them, and they got the job done. They won a playoff game, and now they go to Lambeau to take on a Packers team that had a first round by, that finished 12-4 and four themselves. They were the NFC North champions. This is a team that has made the playoffs for six consecutive seasons and won a Super Bowl back after the 2010 season. This is a big marquee matchup with so many stars on uh, both sides. You're talking about a team with Tony Romo and DeMarco Murray and Des Bryant. And then when you go to the Green Bay Packers, obviously you've got Aaron Rodgers and you've got guys like Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb. You've got um, Clay Matthews on the defensive side of the ball. <clears throat> it's really an interesting and compelling matchup to me. In a matchup that I think out of the four games for me has given me the most trouble in terms of picking who I think is going to win this game. The other three games on this divisional round weekend, I feel pretty confident in my picks. This is the game that I point to and I'm like, this really to me more than any other could go one way or the other. And it wouldn't surprise me to see that team, you know, win. It wouldn't matter who it was. And in fact, in a lot of ways, I might even look at this game and say that the winner of this game, whoever it may be, could very well end up going to represent the NFC in Super Bowl 49. That's how big I think that this game is. I really believe that the winner of this game could very well go on to represent the NFC in Super Bowl 49, even if that means they have to go into Seattle and win the NFC Championship game. Let's look at the Dallas Cowboys and how they can win this matchup. Uh, as has been the key to the success all year, it's no different here. You have to establish DeMarco Murray early. If you establish DeMarco Murray early, that means as a Cowboys team, you could win the time of possession battle, which I think is going to be critical for them. You have to be able to defend Aaron Rodgers in part by keeping him off the field and limiting his opportunities. The Cowboys must win the battle of time of possession. The best way they're going to be able to do that, as they have all year, is to establish DeMarco Murray early and often. In terms of once they do that, then they have to be able in the passing game to open up things for Des Bryant by going in other areas. They must get Terrence Williams and Jason Witten involved and interested early and often. 
Because if you can send the Green Bay Packers into kind of a state of concern as to where the Cowboys are going to attack them in the passing game, then that eventually is going to protect Des Bryant from getting double teamed the whole game. And as a result, is going to open things up for that Cowboys offense and some big things can happen. They have to get DeMarco Murray involved early. They must win that time of position battle. And they must get Williams and Witten involved early, in my opinion. Now, defensively, they have to be able to make the Packers one-dimensional. They have to be able to stuff Eddie Lacy early and say, you're not going to be able to run the ball on us. Aaron Rodgers, as much of a bad formula as that might seem, Aaron Rodgers is going to have to beat us, and he's going to have to beat us throwing the ball. The Cowboys have to make that Packers offense one-dimensional because when they establish Eddie Lacy and they get something out of him in the ground game, it makes the Packers' offense almost impossible to defend. It really, truly does. And when you look at Aaron Rodgers coming into this game with that calf injury, you know, the Cowboys really have to find a way to get pressure on Rodgers early. They have to be able to get in his face early. They have to be able to hit him early and force him out of the pocket, get him on the move. You know, that's not always the best recipe for success against Aaron Rodgers because he has a great ability to extend plays, a great ability to improvise, a great ability to make huge plays on the move uh, you have to be able to force him on the move, though. You have to have him test his calf early. You have to test it often. And if you take away that ability for the Packers to run the ball, where it has to all go on Aaron Rodgers' shoulders, he might not physically be up to the task. Now, when you look at the Green Bay Packers, how can they win this game? They have to get Eddie Lacy going early. It sounds, you hear me say this so often about the running game. Well, the running game matters in the playoffs because things tighten up in the playoffs. They get more physical in the playoffs, and you have to be able to win that physical battle. You have to be able to win in the trenches. You have to be able to establish that identity first. And for the Packers, they must get 20 carries out of Eddie Lacy. They can't expect Aaron Rodgers to just win the game by himself. They have to open things up for him in the passing game. They have to protect him. And one of the ways to protect him is to get Eddie Lacy going early, get him going often. They need Lacy to have like 20 carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown in this game. If they can do that, and then you could sit there and say that the Packers did a lot of the things they needed to do to ensure that they would win this game. They really need to get a third receiver going early as well. They've got Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb, and they're a handful in and of themselves. And it's not like the Cowboys are incredibly good in the secondary, especially at the corner position. This is a Cowboys secondary that can be exploited, in particular with big plays. And that's where the Packers thrive with Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb, is with those big plays down the field. Now, if the Packers can get somebody like a Devontae Adams or an Andrew Corliss or a Richard Rodgers involved and interested early as a third receiver, it just makes Aaron Rodgers and that Packers passing attack that much more difficult to defend, and the Cowboys' defense and secondary just flat out might not be up to the task. They must defensively get the Cowboys in third and long. They have to be able to somewhat contain DeMarco Murray, and they must force the Cowboys' hands. The Cowboys are a really good team, one of the best in the entire league in 2014 at converting in third down. And part of the reason is, is because of the number in third and shorts, third and manageables, you know, the third and four or less that the Cowboys find themselves in because of their willingness early in first and second down and success rate in first and second down of running the football. It gives them third and short manageable situations where they could even run or throw. The Packers must get the Cowboys into as many third and long situations as possible, making the Cowboys kind of one-dimensional in those situations. It's easier to defend that way. And they must get Julius Peppers to provide some pressure on the outside. Clay Matthews is going to do something. He's going to get his, whether it be from inside linebacker, when he's lining up outside, when he's lining up wherever the hell, it doesn't matter. They need Julius Peppers to exploit that Cowboys weakness on the offensive line, which is at right tackle. If they can get Julius Peppers to line up over that right tackle and get into Romo's face early, get into that backfield throughout the game, it's going to bode very well for the success of the Green Bay Packers in this game. When I look at this game, man, I could sit there and give you as many reasons like I just did as why the Cowboys can win this game as why the Packers can win this game. Romo has had, to me, his best year as a pro in 2014. This is the best Cowboys team that I've seen in a long time. And in a lot of ways, even though their defense isn't the greatest, their defense is solid enough, this is a team that has a lot of the pieces in place that can legitimately believe that they can be a Super Bowl contending team. You look at the Green Bay Packers, they've been there before. They have a lot of championship experience. They have perhaps the best quarterback in the National Football League in Aaron Rodgers. You know, there's a lot of reasons to believe why this Packers team can get it done as well. 
You look at the whole thing about the home field advantage in Lambeau Field is probably going to be cold there. They're playing outdoors in January in Green Bay. I don't know that that's as big of an advantage as being made out to be by fans in the media because the Packers in recent years and recent history haven't played that well in the playoffs in Lambeau. They just really haven't. Look at the Vic game back in the 2002 season. Look at the Giants being able to go in there in 2007 and 2011 and beat them and get the job done. Now, those were all games in Lambeau in cold weather. You know, Just because they're playing in Lambeau, that doesn't make the Packers indestructible. At the end of the day, though, I think the Packers are just a little bit better. And if anything else, maybe it's just because I'm a little bit of a bigger believer in Aaron Rodgers than I am in Tony Romo. I'm just being honest here. And as a result, I think the Packers can do a better job of exposing and exploiting the Cowboys defense than the Cowboys offense can of the Packers defense. So I think this is going to be a really fun game. I really do. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. And I think this is a game that could come down to a late score or a late blown opportunity. Um, and I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers to beat the Dallas Cowboys 27-23. to